This is the CC Radio Podcast. It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. we have missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, um, like the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling, like you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get is a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed, and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. You are listening to Believe, Paranormal and UFO Radio. My name is Cade Moyer, and thanks for tuning in. If you've had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au, or you can message me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash believe UFO Radio. If you enjoy this episode, there are a few things you can do to help the show. Firstly, you can go to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating and review. Or you can share the show around social media with your friends and family, and that would help us grow. Tonight, I'm joined by Attila, and Attila is here to do part two of his uh, telling of the Australian's version of Skinwalker Ranch. We had Attila on, uh, well, when you're listening to this, it'll be last last week, and uh, we kind of had the cutout interview a little bit short because... We were having some very, very weird activity happening on Attila's end while he was talking. Uh, when I say weird stuff, this was headphones flying across the room, stuff flying off the shelves. Attila, tell us about this stuff going on, mate. It was quite interesting, Kate, and thanks for having me back again. Um, I know we were in mid-conversation and the the headphone that was on the table decided to fly off. Um <laughs> Uh, onto the middle of the floor, and um, and just thing got, things got really weird, didn't it? Like you, you were saying that you heard like almost like EVPs coming through on your yeah. end too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just things are getting a bit crazy, and I think that's where we ended it. Um, I, yeah, I, mate. To be honest, I've I've done quite a few um, interviews over over uh, over the years, as you can imagine, but I've, this is the first time mate, anything like that has ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done to me, <laughs> mate? I think uh, I think we have some additional listeners uh, joining the show, which you know I'm always happy to have more listeners on the show. Uh, but this is this is really going into some uh, new territory, so to say, for the uh, for the podcast. So, mate, last time we we had you on, we we were talking about the Skinwalker Ranch. We got up to the the story of you, well, a team member potentially seeing this this kind of creature with no no real body to it but it was kind of crawling around on its um on its elbows mate let's let's continue on from there because the, when you were telling me that that absolutely was i'm not gonna lie it was scaring the shit out of me well that was it was it was one of those nights where there's a lot of things that were going on and it was I mean, I remember a very similar scenario back in 2001 when uh, I was out at Hill End with a group of people and, uh, and we were chasing strange lights in the sky and it was just, everything was quite up until a certain point and then it, it just it just became a very, very active evening and, and I think I can kind of relate that evening even though the phenomena is very, very different to what happened that night. And it was just one thing after the next that was going on. Um, I mean, look, nobody expected this. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, how do you expect to see something like that crawling across the ground, you know? I mean, I've, I've never even heard of stuff like that, you know, let alone seen it. I personally didn't see it, but the, the two crew members who saw it uh, were completely freaked out. One of them happened to be my daughter and the other one was a, a good friend of ours and she was there um uh helping with us uh with with the production i think we were i was filming uh, panel investigators uncut and we we're doing a, a segment on independent investigators and um and yeah just stuff started getting real and um 
So it was it was an interesting evening, I have to say. It was this was when my daughter actually saw that thing, that rake like thing walking across the the roof. Um, and it was just getting too real for everybody and, and it was one of those nights where it was enough was enough. It was, it was getting just, just too strange. I mean, there's one thing that it's one thing that you hear, you know, bumps in the hall and there's another thing when you start seeing stuff like that. Um, you, you really don't know what these things are about. Uh, we know from past experience, like from the, uh, uh, from the doppelganger, um, that we experienced, uh, during a shoot, um, back, uh, 2012 2013 i think it was um we know that these things can interact with the environment interact with people um they're physical in nature so you know they can potentially harm people i mean that's the first thing that comes to mind when you see something as hideous as that that will they harm me uh will they cause harm to others um you know looking at it from from our perspective i mean they look hideous and look look monster-like but the problem is that you know i think that watching all these horror movies um and, and the way you know um stories portray these these unusual looking life forms if you want to call it that or entities um it automatically instills fear into our minds into our hearts thinking that these things are going to kill me or eat me alive um look it is quite possible that, that whatever these were were quite harmless and and whatever it was was probably just trying to tell us, look, bugger off, and I'm going to show you some scary stuff so it can just move along because you have no business here. Um, looking back at it now, I tend to sort of lean towards that. Um, obviously, we don't know for sure, um, but we weren't going to hang around to find out. It, it really does raise a lot of questions because when the, I guess, the safety of your team, the safety of your crew, the safety of your your family is really brought into the the scenario, it it kind of changes everything because it goes from going to a spooky place to going to a dangerous place. Mm, mm. Well, that's right. I mean, my wife and I have been to enough past places together to to know you know, what certain things are. And I mean, obviously you can't say, oh, well, that's, you know, that's a spirit of a dead guy or, a, you know, or whatever. But we, we know that, you know, with subtle movements and knocks and bangs and things like that, we, we've, we've been through, we've, we've, her and I have investigated so many uh, properties and places together um, that, um, you know, that, that we, we can kind of tell the telltale, telltale signs that, okay, well, that's not, you know, that's not house movement. That's something else that's, you know, that's tapping the walls and, and, and you know, moving the chairs and, you know, and, and obviously the list goes on. And those listeners who've actually are in or have been in, in um, you know, the researching the paranormal will know exactly what I'm talking about. But, yeah, it, it, it is. It, it comes to a point where you start it's almost like you're leveling up and you're going to you're opening the next door and okay we'll see what's what's behind door number five and it it, it it's not always a pleasant experience um and, and some people may think oh well you know it you know how can you well, why don't you run after something like this and that's what you're there for aren't you well, that's that's true but like you said um before kate that you've got to take safety into consideration because we don't know what we're dealing with you know it's 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 almost like you know um, i guess when when early man started you know uh, migrating out of africa and, and encountered different creatures in different countries that they've never seen before um, and i could probably assure you that there were very curious people out there at the time that went up to a, an animal that was you know a carnivore and thought oh this will be fine you know you'll see it's just a fluffy animal and yeah it probably cost that poor bastard's life but you know it's it's i don't think it's that bad um but I, I do believe that you need to be very very careful and when you have this gut feeling that screams at you it's telling you look you need to leave now because th this is an unsavory situation and it can get quite bad uh, you need to listen to your gut instinct, and especially when you have family members who are on the edge um, as well and friends, um, then you need to listen to that and you need to go. And and so far, touch wood, we've, we've got out of it scot-free. So what is it about this, this, this place that allures you to it? Because it's... It's obviously extremely haunted. You know, there's obviously some some extreme paranormal activity going on there. And it, it almost sounds like there's 
this possible shapeshifter type of creature or entity going there what what is the pull to to go there is it to is it to find out what this thing may be yeah that's a really good question um i mean things are different now and if we've discussed this the, the place is condemned and falling apart completely so it's um it's on the verge of collapse and i think um yeah I, I don't even i don't even know if the building's there anymore to be honest and i think just the foundations are there but um yeah it was it it, it this place really had a really bizarre pull to it and i wasn't just the only person that was that was drawn to this place um, you know, with with friends and colleagues and people I've met over the years in the paranormal community, um, and if they're listening to, it, they know exactly what I'm talking about because because um, uh, some of them were actually there and were there with me at the time of some of these you know encounters. Um, other people felt it too. It was, I guess, there is a, a large element of curiosity because you, you don't often find a place like this you know i mean i've been searching uh you know ever since i first walked through that front door back in 2007 i think hmm, seven so about 2007 yeah around 2007 i first walked through that door i've been searching for for a very very similar property to to have to kind of compare with with with, with that location and and I think I mentioned this the last time, the only other place that came close to it was an orphanage in Hungary. And we went there in 2017 when I was filming Ghosts of Europe. That place had a very, very similar um, feel to it. Um, but that orphanage, I have found out since, have had a very dark history there and has had a, a history of abuse and, and other things that, that happened there back during uh, during the early communist regime or during the communist era. Um, so that's, you know, late 40s, early 50s, before the revolution and even after the revolution there. So we won't go into a history lesson, but um, that place was, was, was almost condemned and it was empty and it was a multi-story building. But some of the things that we experienced there were very similar. I mean, the energies, the feelings, the smell was very similar to, to that place. And that place had its own unique smell. It really did. It, it was vile. And I've been to many places that have, that had similar, you know, I guess similar backgrounds and, and had similar sort of services and nothing kind of came close to it. I mean, this thing just, it's almost like it lives in its own dimension um, and it, it broke through into ours and as it did, it started rotting away. Um, it, I don't know how else to put it. It's just one of those unexplained things. I can look into myself deep inside and try to get answers for you, but I don't think there's one specific answer that can explain that question for you. No, that's totally fine. And what is, what is interesting about that is it almost seems like it, it's an attack on every sensory level that the human has. Oh, for sure. Uh, for sure. I mean, you know, from, from, you know, audible phenomena to, to, you know, to visual phenomena. I mean, it, it's, it's every, every single thing, like, I mean, it, it, it interacts with you. I mean, I, I had some unpleasant experiences there and, and lost consciousness. And we, again, we spoke about this the last time, but, and I wasn't just the only one that experienced it. There was many other people and males predominantly who actually had that experience. And for what reason, I don't know. We can only speculate. It's it's really interesting stuff to to think that something like this could could exist because it's almost the I guess it's almost the the thing of Hollywood is that you hear about these types of things in Netflix TV shows and in, in scary movies you don't actually expect these things to to be real and I think it's a really really good almost warning to people who um. Who want to go out and find things like this because one day you may just find something that you don't want to see. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. Also, are you wanting more content? Why not become a Believe Plus member? You'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public. Not only that, you'll also get our regular feed without any ads. Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. Yeah, as my wife says, be careful what you wish for because, (laughs) 
yeah, um, things can get real very, very quickly. Um, and um, if you if you're not there with the right people, and I don't mean that you know, um, the wrong crowd or people who um, have got in, ill intentions, but people who have, haven't experienced this type of things and and know what to do in certain situations, you know, people can get hurt. We had, we've had some severe, serious injuries happen at that place and all because of the interaction with, with whatever was lingering in the, in the darkest of corners in that place. Yeah, it's, it's something that is very very terrifying to think that someone may just stumble into into a place like that and not realize the the situations that they're going into especially if they're you know say they're fairly new into the into the investigation game they they're kind of just dipping their toes in it's something to i think it's something like almost like a word of warning for people out there well that's right i mean um Look, to give you an idea, I'm, and again, I'm not sure if we actually covered this the last time, um, but quite a few years ago when this place was, was still in, in reasonable condition, um, the owners actually had um, tradesmen there. And the tradesmen were painting and repairing and whatnot. And one day they just left everything there and, and left the building in a hurry and never came back. They left all their gear, all their tools, all the paint, uh, everything and just just basically evacuated the place and they refused to come back so this is during the day uh, you could imagine what actually happens there under the right conditions when there's no light yeah and for a tradie to kind of just leave everything behind it's that's not normal it's that's their livelihood that they're leaving behind so it must have been something to to rock their worlds to just leave that all behind Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you hear of these things happen every now and then, but not very often where you have people who aren't really connected to the paranormal, but for some reason they encounter something so terrible that, you know, it they just don't care what they leave behind. It's 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 almost like fight or flight, you know, I have to get out of there. I don't give it I don't care if I have to leave, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of tools and equipment behind. Um, yeah, so as you said, I don't know what they experienced, but um, it would have been pretty traumatic for them. So one thing I, I do want to touch on here, Attila, and it'd be great if you, you could shine some light on it, is when your your daughter saw this this thing, what what was her reaction? Like what was her her process to to kind of validate what she saw. Well, look, Kate, the, the thing is though with my kids, um, yeah, they were born into a family that that embraces the paranormal. So even at a very early childhood, if they had experiences or encounters inside our house, we would sit down and discuss it with them. And rather than tell them, oh, look, you know, just having a bad dream, you know, just ignore it, you know. And if it's persisting over and over again, then, you know, there's something going on. But we never we never said that to them. We never said, you know, it's only a bad dream or you're making it up or it's just your imagination. So they knew what, what we were involved in. Uh, we would talk about some of the cases, not all of them. And um, we talked to them about some of the investigations that we went to. So they were quite familiar with, with with some of the phenomena that's out there and especially in old buildings that have that have a history um but regardless it's it's you know it doesn't prepare you for having a um a face-to-face encounter with one of these things uh and by that i mean obviously you know seeing something within with 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 your own eyes with your naked eyes and um and it's happening right in front of you and it seems very real and it seems very unbelievable because it's not something you see on a daily basis so you know processing this information i guess even even for someone who um who comes from such a background is difficult um but as parents were there as as a support mechanism um and Look, it, it did create a shock. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, my kids have experienced a lot of strange things um, when they were out with me. But they're, they're actually grateful for the experience. At least that's what, I, <laughs> what they've been telling me. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's very important to actually have an, an, a parent that's, that's understanding and, and can discuss these things with them. 
I would imagine it would be a a very grounding moment in one's life to to encounter something so profound in and and so unknown. The thing is, though, the, the amount of things that we've experienced over the years, you know, um, you you know, you see all different shapes and forms, and and you you can try to label some of these entities or creatures if you would like to call them but in actual fact we don't know what they really are um and and having witnessed them i think it does ground you a little bit um because it 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 gives you perspective uh as to what else is out there it's it's not just what we experience on a daily basis you know if you you spend your entire life in front of a computer reading stories you're really not going to experience what what the world has to offer. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the space that we see, but, you know, there, there are other things out there and perhaps even other worlds within worlds that that have the capabilities of, I don't know, maybe converging or, or giving us a glimpse of, of what lays behind our reality. Um, I mean, this is all mere speculation, but, um, you know, it's... Um, when you spend so much time and sometimes you spend nearly every single weekend and you're out there for, for a whole day or a whole weekend chasing these things, um, the more you experience, the more you start to understand that we are certainly not alone in this world. I think there is so much more to this world that we, that we don't understand. And I'm, I'm internally grateful that there's, there's individuals like you out there who are, actually doing the hard yards and exploring these types of things because the the i guess the sad reality of it is that this is it's very much a fringe science and it's something Mm. that probably won't ever get really brought to to i guess the mainstream well much like we see with with ufos at the moment and you know even even yowies are kind of on the on those back burners with pretty much the the paranormal is that mm. it's it's something that you know isn't supposed to exist these things aren't real and when they are it really is a big culture shock to to someone who experiences them well that's right i mean you can imagine then if one person has such a shock you can imagine that a whole society held a whole society react to something like that if you know, if, if whoever out there, the powers to be, came clean and said, look, guys, we will have to now inform you that these are real. Um, look, there was there was a, a, a discussion that um, that I heard over the radio, I think it was, it was another podcast, but I had this discussion with, with other people in the field. And, um, for example, um, we're looking at, you know, Bigfoot as, as, a, as a prime example. Um, now, if, if all of a sudden the national parks came clean and said, look, guys, okay, we do have relic hominids ranging from anywhere between, you know, one metres up to about 15, after, oh, sorry, I'd say about uh, four or five foot tall up to about 15 or 18 foot tall um, in the wilderness. Some are friendly, some are not so friendly, but, you know, but they're out there and, you know, happy camping. What will actually happen to to our to our industry in australia i mean now that you know we, we're looking at things like the the pandemic how it's basically closed all doors for for the tourism to come to australia and for, for us to travel anywhere so we're now relying on, on on an internal market within within one nation um well no i say one market we're relying on on citizens to spend money and keep the economy going if we were to take that away, if we were to take, for example, put, put the put the fear of hell into people um, by telling them that there are, you know, Bigfoot out there and relic hominids, I mean, you can imagine what industries would get affected by it. And first of all would be the camping industry. Um, the four-wheel drive industry would get affected. And, and basically anything to do with, with holidays and going to the national parks, people would think twice uh, before – you know, uh, going out into and venturing out into the wilderness, not to mention those people that back onto forests and national parks. So we have a the, the, things like this, if they were to get, if they were to be made public, they would have a major economic impact and not for the best. So I think that there's, there's a reason why a lot of these things uh, are being kept under the lid. And, and, and I, I understand why, because, 
you know, unfortunately, um, when it comes to about two or three people, that's all good and well because these people can sit down and discuss matters. But when you're talking to a crowd of, of hundreds of thousands or even millions, that's when you start losing your grip on control and people start making up their own minds. And even if you t say that, you know, these rally hominids are friendly, there will be people out there who are going to start labeling them as demons, as man eaters. And before you know it, people will be kept grabbing weapons and going out and hunting them. So th there are a lot of implications out there by, you know, openly disclosing it and actually acknowledging the fact that these entities, Bigfoot, you know, whatever else that are out there are real. Um, and, and I get why it's all kept under the carpet, all swept under the carpet. Absolutely. And not only is there the, I guess, the, the financial repercussions of it, it will, it can, it has the potential to almost destroy religion worldwide if these things started to come out. Oh, look, I, I don't know if, if it would, because I think that, um, I, I think, some religious movements would would have the ability to to um, adapt to to these circumstances, and they would make up their own sort of explanation as to what these are, um, and and that would, I guess, I believe would would probably create a reasonable um, balance within within their own group, um, but. It's, it's, a, it's a very complicated subject once you start talking about, you know, um, disclosure and, and um, you know, whistleblowing and all that about certain things because, like I said before, you know, when you release all this information to, to the public, I mean, who knows how far they'll take it. I tell you what, if 2020 ever taught me anything is that if we, if we got some information that we just couldn't handle, it would, it would be absolute mayhem in society because absolutely you just yeah. you have a look how we reacted to to the pandemic and mm. I'm, I'm not saying just australia i'm kind of saying worldwide and um it is absolute madness in in some areas and to then come out and say hey yeah ghosts are real these these shape-shifting creatures are real and uh yeah that is a big foot that lives behind your behind your house in the bush there it's all real. I, it, it really does feel like society could almost collapse on itself in, in a giant kind of mess. Yeah, make sure you buy enough toilet paper when they do disclose <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tiller, um, Tilla, would you would you ever go back to, to this location? Is there is there still this this weird pull to, for you to, to go back to this Australian Skinwalker Ranch? Look, um, the, like I said, the property is 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 probably no longer there. Um, the surrounding areas, I, I, I without doubt, I would definitely um, would return back there and, and um, I guess, spend a bit of time and, and see what actually happens and see what occurs. See if if all that is still there or it's basically just vanished uh, with, with the collapsing walls and ceilings. Um, yeah, uh, look, it's there's some of the things that did happen there happened even outside of the grounds of this, this place. So it, it, it tends to, tends to sort of, um, it, it suggests that, that whatever was going on, there is not necessarily exclusive within the confounds of, of the actual building itself but it does in fact extend beyond. So yeah, I definitely would return um, in, into the surrounding area. And that's going to do it for tonight. And remember, if you have had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au or you can message me on Facebook and that's facebook.com forward slash believe UFO radio. Until next time, stay safe, and you've been listening to Believe, Australian Paranormal and UFO Radio.